Yeah, come on in. Don't worry about it. No, I mean, it's the... It's the weekend, but... Uh, yeah, I'm letting my hair grow along. <laughs> what I have left, huh? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Well, you're new here, so... You know, you just started at the office where I work, and, um, you know, we're supposed to mentor, you know, the new guy, so you're the the new guy, so come on in, and we can talk. Uh, yeah, the, the wife and kids, they aren't used to my schedule after all these years. They're all sleeping. Don't worry about it. Come on in. No. Yeah, I'm a little more laid back at home than I am at the office. Hang on, I gotta put a little lotion on my hands, they're awful dry. I just got out of the shower and skin is dry. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this too, because I'm gonna regret it. Well, I wanted to crack a beer since you're here and uh you get this lotion on your hands. And then you just, you can't touch nothing. You know? It's terrible. But, uh, so what brings you here? You, do you like working at my, in my department? Okay. Alright. Yeah. He, he's like that and, um, yeah. That's, that's normal. Don't, everybody, yeah, everybody talks about him like that. You're not telling me anything new. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, Amy's always like that. She's a uh, no-nonsense, tough gal. That's why she's the boss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you're going to have to get used to working for a lady. The rest of us have, too. She's the right person for the job. Oh... Oh, you don't mind working for her. You're just not used to... You're shy around women. Okay. I... No. I can dig it. I, I think every guy is shy around women. Um, I got some beer. Do you want one of these? I got some uh, Miller High Life. You want one? No? Not into that? Yeah, I only have them in this big, massive 40-ounce size, but... I don't know how long you're planning on staying. Well, I've got this <sighs> Cider Boys Peach Cobbler. What is it? <laughs> peach Country. Apple Peach Hard Cider. Yeah, the wife. Yeah. Zippity doo -dah. I'll have one with you if you want one. And I got this. You'll never believe this. A friend of mine. One of my um, fellow agents, he doesn't work for our department, um, he bought me this. Yeah, he's uh, Austrian. And, uh, you know, we have a branch office over in Germany, but not in, actually, Austria. So he kind of runs things for me in that area, you know, Austria, and then over to, like, Slovakia. Mm -hmm. Well, here, I'll just pop this open for you. Yeah, he gave me this really cool, and that is a nice... That is a nice can opener, or bottle opener there. Yeah, look at it. It's really nice. It's really nice. Slick. It's Vera? Let me see. I got my reading glasses on here. Vera. Really nice. Yeah, Vera. Vera. Well, it's W-E-R-A, but we pronounce it Vera. But in, in German, it's Vera. Vera. So, yeah, let me get open another one. No, I don't want you to feel left out. I'll drink one of these Cider Boys with you. Okay, here's one for you. Okay, let's see how Peach Country is. Oh, cheers. Fruity and delicious. Oh man, that tastes bitter like an apple. It's almost like apple cider. I don't taste the peach at all. 
It's making my mouth water like crazy from that apple. Really strong apple in it. Mm. Okay, so what brought you here today? Okay, you like the job. You're shy around women. What's the hang up? I mean, you got to get your 90 days in if you want to stay working here. So we got to get you through it. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, you brought a prescription? Okay. Well, I'm a doctor of astrobiology. I'm not actually a medical doctor, but I guess I could take a look at your prescription, depending on what it is. Is this a put on? Did the guys put you up to this? Come on. This is a put on, right? Are you serious? No, no, don't cry. Don't get upset. No, here. I got some paper towels out here in the garage. Here, have a paper towel. No, don't, don't get upset. Oh, allergies, I, I got it. Okay, it's cool. It's, it's cool, bro. It's cool. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, I'm definitely gonna need a drink. Like you're, how old are you? And you just got out of the academy. Okay. Didn't you guys go to the massage parlors down there by the base? Oh, you didn't want anybody to know. So you you didn't want anybody to know that you don't understand the birds and the bees. And you are, for all intents and purposes, a virgin. Uh, you didn't want anybody to know, but you felt obligated to, to tell me, your supervisor. Oh, that's, 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 that's great. That's wonderful. I really appreciate your, your uh, candor and your honesty in this matter, because... Of course I would tell my co-worker that I'm a virgin. That would be a good place to start for my career. Uh, where are you from? Uh, okay, yeah. Very religious family? Yeah. That. Yeah, I'm starting to put the pieces together here. I'm not knocking religion, and I'm not knocking your brand of religion, but... Um, it it appears the homeschool system, uh, homeschooling, uh, uh, failed you miserably. Yeah. Did you have access to the internet? You didn't look anything up? Okay. Not even in academy? Oh, because you didn't want anybody to see your history. Yeah, you didn't want anybody to look at your uh, computer history. Yeah, because they were doing background checks on you constantly. Make sure you're good for the agency. Well, I take it you're squeaky clean. But that is, you know, because you got your security clearance. But that, my friend, is a very good um, reason why a, a man of your age <laughs> would be in this predicament wonderful so you want me to what what part don't you understand I mean did you have dogs and cats growing up like chickens you had chickens okay did you notice the rooster was always chasing the hens around did you oh you had a you had a gay rooster okay are you sure or you just thought he was well, maybe he was an abusive husband. It just looked like he didn't like the girl chickens. Um, oh, he was always climbing on top of them. Then, yeah, roughing them up. That's, see, that's, yeah, that's once more. Who, your, your mom explained that to you? Okay. Yeah, he wasn't gay. That was a, that, that, that rooster was straight. Sounds like he was straight as an arrow. He, he bullied one girl chicken after the next you say huh okay do you oh all right yeah um 
Do you like working in my office? I mean, do you feel a drive to to pursue this line of work? Okay, don't cry. No, here's a here's another paper towel. No, no, don't cry. No, it's okay. No, look, look. Everybody was young once. I'll I'll admit, you know, I didn't understand at all. Yeah, I knew the the mechanics of it. Uh, but uh, it's another thing doing it, you know. And I I I, I assure you, if when you're with a a, a someone that you're attracted to, you know, I'm not making any assumptions here. Like, okay, so you're, okay, so that's what you're into. That's, well, yeah, you really don't know what you're into until you get into it. You see what I'm saying? You know, you kind of got to get in there to get out, you know what I mean? To get something out of it. Um, yeah, I'm, I will tell you this much. Uh, I wish my wife was up right she's still sleeping uh, I am the worst person to talk to about this this what this what this is right here this conversation she wouldn't uh, I'm not lying here she wouldn't let me talk about this or explain it to any of my three children that's a true story that's mm -hmm. mrs. dr. Andrew Michaels uh, she shut me down a couple of times when I was trying to explain what a well, the kids were on the bus and um, one of the little boys was calling the girls all a bunch of little prostitutes. This is like elementary school bus, and that's where you learn about sex in the public school system is uh, elementary school buses. So just put your kid on a bus. By fourth grade, they know everything. They pretty much got it. You know, they know everything, all the sex acts, everything. They got it down. But, um, you know, in this case, they were asking me, I think they were like in first grade, third grade. A little boy says, girls are nothing. My dad says, girls are nothing but prostitutes. And so my kids came home and said, what's a prosecutor? They wanted to know what a prosecutor was. And I said, well, a prosecutor is a member of the court system and then uh, why is he calling little girls prosecutors and I go oh he was calling them prostitutes and then we got to the bottom of the story I know we're not getting that far with this because and then you know they said uh, you know, so what what is that and I said well it's when you go down the street and you see a woman walking on the curb and my wife stopped me so that was the most, uh, that was the complete history of my discussing sex with my children. And I had three, two boys and a girl. That was the, that was it. Um, uh, my wife said that she would, you know, cut my dinger off if she caught me trying to explain prostitutes to the kids again or any, anything else. So, which little girls are not prostitutes by the way no no um yeah you do have to pay sometimes to to get somewhere with them you have to take them out on a date but i don't call, consider that prostitution um i consider it needy i mean on my part not theirs i mean you know there would be no sex in the world if men weren't um greedy and uh full of debauchery and perverted so I mean, women could just, like, take care of it themselves and get some sleep. You know, I don't think that's helping this conversation at all. Let's, let's just get serious. Okay, let's get serious. First, we're going to have a drink of this. You like this, too, don't you? I, that makes sense to me now. Have you ever... Okay, so you don't drink a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to work on that. It's okay to be straight-laced. There's nothing wrong with not drinking, smoking, fornicating, all that stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. You better um, 
like, I don't know how to explain this. This is the part that gets me in trouble. I wouldn't, like, go into a date with a girl with that loaded gun in your pants because you're just going to make a mess all over yourself. And if she's a flirt, you're going to get, like, um, blue balled. Have you ever been blue balled? That's part of the birds and the bees. That's when you're, um, yeah, they swell up and you get, like, real pain down there. Do you ever have that? Yeah. Okay. Side hugging. What's side hugging? That's as far as you've gone. Is side hugging. You know, okay, you're engaged. How can you be engaged if you've never, didn't you and her, you know, take the car for a test drive or something? You know, like, you know, like, test drive. Like, kick the tires, check under the hood, you know, check the oil, pull the dip stick out there, you know, put the dip stick back in. You, do you you get the analogy? Okay, all right, so, all right, let's try and figure this out here. Okay, so you have a electric plug, which I can't find one. Okay, this will work right here. Okay, let's see if I can do this without wrecking up everything here. Hold still. Okay, this is, I'm going to explain it to you without getting in trouble. All right, see this here? This is a headphone jack. Do you see it? There it is. Okay. This is what's called a male, the male end of a headphone jack. Okay, and then let's see what we can do. This while I'm messing things up here. All right, figures. And then this is where the headphone jack goes into the, you know, the MP3 player. See, and that little hole right there, that little hole, it's a hole. That's the female end. Okay, all right. So you got a male end and a female end. And if you take them and you push them together, we're going to do it up here. You push them together, you make a connection. See? That's, what's that called? Soaking. No, 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 that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is you put your um, microphone jack in the, the hole, the, the female end, and then you realize it's not quite in there right. So you pull it back out, and then you push it back in, and that felt, you felt pretty good about that, but you think maybe you needed to get it in there just right. So you pull it back out, and then you put it back in again, and then you realize that the hole's really tight, and it's, you know, it's just not going in there all the way to the bottom so you just keep working it in and out like that you know like in your case maybe a hundred times and then uh, like then it's like a sudden explosion of euphoria and ecstasy because it fits perfect and then you realize you've completed the syncing up of the male end and the female end in the plug. And you're completely happy and exhausted from all that work. It's a lot of work. It doesn't get easier when you get older. You're like, uh, maybe we just, you know, maybe I'll just take care of it myself and roll over and go to sleep. So that'll happen. So don't, don't think you're like, there's something wrong with you. Okay. All right. So. Does that kind of, you're not, it's, this is, no, no, soaking is something they teach you when they teach you the side hugging thing. And that, when we're talking about like the dipstick, okay, let's go back to the car analogy. You're engaged and you're going to get married. And I'm asking you if you've taken the car, okay, so you're the driver, yeah, and somebody else is the car. We're going to just, we're not going to. We're not going to, uh, what do they call that? Objectify anybody here. So you're the driver. Yeah. And it doesn't always, you don't always have that plug. Sometimes you have two plugs. 
Let, can we just let's stay with this car thing? I'm the I'm I'm out. I'm out. That's it. I'm done. Nope. Do you understand at all? I'm not gonna look it up on the internet with you. I'm your boss, and I have to help you. And technically, this is a human uh, resources issue that you would bring to me. But, uh, but I, I just, I'm not, a, I don't know. Okay, wow. Hmm. There you go. Bottoms up, right? Yeah. That was, that was rough. I guess it's like drinking apple cider. I don't know. Okay, so let's stay on target here. So you're the driver, and you put the key in the ignition. Okay, we've already done that part. And you got the salesman. That's the person's father. They're trying to unload them on you. And uh, they want you to buy the car. Yeah. So, you're like, I don't know if I want to buy this car just looking at it. It looks like it's the right color, and the right make, and the right model. Um, but I think I need to get out and, like, kick the tires a little bit. Check the radio, you know, see if it's got a lot of static on that radio. Like a little, yeah, yeah, like a little chihuahua dog, you know, yeah, 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 in your head. Like a whole fucking night bitching you out like that you, you gotta check these things like you know you're just in love with the the outside of the car see right now you gotta get in there under the hood check the radio make sure the speakers all work you know make sure that uh, you know check the you can look at the mother-in-law that's a good sign right there yeah and if I would have I, I would have listened to that wisdom I would have probably never got married but uh, you know we all have we all make mistakes <laughs> We, we all make mistakes in life, but, uh, you know, there you go. So, all right, so here's the, okay, all right, bottoms up or whatever, something like that, all right, so, ooh, label's out, here, hang on, you're, you're turning me into an alcoholic with this request. Okay, so, mm. oh, that's tasty. Oh, wash that apple out of my mouth. So, okay. You get out and you kick the tires, and the guy's like, Hey, why buy the cow when the milk's for free? And you say, Hey, who buys a car without taking it for a test drive? You know what I'm saying there? Brother from another mother? Pew! So... You get in there and you reach in, you know, you gotta put your hand in there and smell your finger and you're actually put, no, listen, I'm trying to use like, this is just the best I can do. This is why I'm not allowed to talk to my children about this. So you put your, you reach in, you open the door and you put your hand in there, you know, and you're like feeling around and then you pull the hood latch, right? Then you smell your finger. And then you put the hood up and you pull the dipsticks out and you check the fluids. And you make sure they're all the right colors and consistencies, not smell too bad, you know, nice and clean in the engine block. You see what I'm saying? You got to check these things out, you know, like lift up the hood, kind of like, you know, lift the hood up, like and go, oh my. And, you know, lift up the hood. When you lift up the hood, you go, you salute, because that's what we're fighting for right there. You know, when you lift that hood up, you know, you just, it's okay. It's, it's patriotic. You know, if you, if she catches you, like, why are you saluting when you lifted up my skirt and say, you know, because I'm patriotic, she'll, she'll be like, oh, my hero, you know, so it's not wrong. You know, in, in your case, I think she'd buy it. I, I do. I don't think... She would hold it against you. Certainly, I don't hold it against you. No. It is tough. It is tough uh, growing old. Uh, I Right now, I wish I was uh, retired. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. 
this is this is not yeah you're you're pushing me you're pushing me with this bull are you sure this isn't a setup like you're not recording this are you like to show the guys on monday morning or something you're like hey dr andrew michaels told me all about sex you know you're not doing that are you okay drink that apple juice there it'll make you feel better Don't worry, I got more if you need it. Don't be embarrassed. This happens every once in a while. Somebody, you know, just doesn't get the memo or something. Okay, so we're not talking about side hugging. And we're not talking about soaking. And we're not talking about um, fornication. It's not fornication if you're going to get married. It's like, kind of like a... Let me, let me put it another way. Do you ever hear of a prenup? Okay, prenup. She has assets, and you have assets before you get married. And you show each other the assets, see? And you get a lawyer, and you sign a paper that says that if anything goes wrong, she can go her way with her assets, and you can... Um, leg her out back to mothers with your assets right okay that's a prenup see it's kind of like what we're talking about here you're just she shows you her assets see and you show her your assets and she goes and she goes okay i approve and you go i definitely approve because i'm a man i i'll take anything i can get in a, a last chicken in the window and then then you know and maybe if you ask really nice she'll she'll even enjoy it pretend you know you can tell her to pretend to enjoy it if she's crying that's not a good sign yeah if um you know you're going at it there pretty good and um she's crying you're probably doing something wrong it might be time to stop and say um you know and, and uh, you know if you're crying oh gosh that's a tough one so if you're crying and she she keeps asking why are you yeah um i think you might need to talk to a psychiatrist about that yeah, if you're crying, it's not it's not a good sign. If she's crying, it's understandable because you're ruining her life. You know, she's settled for whatever you know this is. And you can't blame a woman for that. You you just can't. But if you're crying, um do you watch pro wrestling a lot? Yeah. Mm. No, I'm not making any assumptions, but, yeah. Oh, I I have lots of... No, I don't actually have any male bodybuilding magazines in my house. Not one. I was going to try and go with you on that, but I, I, I can't do it. You might, you might need to see somebody else about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um... Does anything I have said helped? Like, at all? Like, even a little bit? Okay, so, there's that. Alright. Good. We're good then. You're cured, or something. Yeah. Big wedding. Am I uninvited? Oh, you sh You don't have to. Just because I'm your supervisor you don't have to invite me just because i'm your supervisor there's no drinking at the wedding okay yeah uh -huh. it's at the church huh all right you should just go maybe to just the peace you know is uh is she wearing white because that's a good sign i mean it helps in your case it would be a good sign if she's wearing red or black, I think I'd run, but that's just me. And her mother's nice. Oh, 
Good. Oh, you get along great with her. That's that's wonderful. Well, yeah, they'll do anything to sucker you in. No, I didn't mean anything by that. So it's it's good to get you. It's good you get along with your in laws. They probably like you a lot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, you going on a honeymoon? Good. Yeah. All right, then. Are we done here or is there more? Oh, there's more. Um, yeah, you know, protection can be fun. Uh, they make uh, different kinds. Yeah, they make, uh, they even make flavored ones. They have like, uh, I don't know, they have fruit flavors so that they're not un, yeah. I, I think you could ask her if, if there's nothing wrong with practicing safe sex and wearing a, wearing the old sheath, you know, the old, uh. I mean, every sailor, I mean, I was in the Department of the Navy. I mean, every sailor, you know, wears a raincoat, you know. What's the matter with that? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, is that what we're talking about here? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, they're pretty thin. You're still going to feel some of it. You're, you know. Is there something else going on here you need to talk to me about? Because I'm not really qualified. I'm not maybe the right guy to t I'm not the right guy yeah mm, let me use another analogy here I'm all out of analogies hey you know what maybe you shouldn't get married I mean I hate to be a downer you know like a Debbie Downer but maybe it's just not the right time I mean there is the whole COVID thing and uh Social distancing and uh, oh, that's your excuse for not kicking the tires. Social distancing, you know, if you have to make excuses not to kick the tires on that car that you're talking about purchasing for the next 20 or 30 years until death do you part, it you know, you might be in the wrong situation here. Did that ever dawn on you? that maybe this is a mistake like I don't want to be the old timer here dispensing the hard truth but um, speaking of hard when you're around her is 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 uh, do things get difficult like do you get a little charged up like you know foaming at the mouth like ooh, you look good in those tight jeans type that you know oh well I don't think you're going about this the wrong way. Uh, I think the fact that you brought up her older brother and his genes is um, what we call a, a, a flag. No, 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 not a, not no. I didn't say that. I said flag, not. I didn't say that word. I said flag. You're bringing it's it's a flag, like a, you know, like America first flag okay yeah stars and stripes there you go uh, we would flag this conversation as like mm -hmm. like that's a signal see that tells us that maybe things aren't uh, quite you know you can pretend all you want but at the end of the day maybe uh, okay so there's these let's go back to the beginning um, so there's this little microphone jack, and he's really lonely, okay, and he doesn't quite fit into, he's a square peg, and he doesn't fit into a round hole. That's it. Okay. He's a little different than all the other microphone jacks. There you go. And he doesn't know if he can live up to the standards when he doesn't quite fit in that yeah and I'm here to tell you there's nothing wrong with being a round peg 
when there's a bunch of square holes around. Because if you look really hard and you go downtown to the dance clubs, yeah, downtown, you might be able to find a club with its full of square pegs and square holes. There, there you go. That's the, and then they, they'll be glad to help you with the square peg problem. But I think you need to call the wedding off first. And, okay, wait, stop. Don't, you're not leaving. We're going to get a couple things straight here. Um, first of all, you're not going to go to your in-laws and tell them that we had this conversation. You're not going to blame any of this on me. See, you're going to, what we call in the business, you're going to man up. Okay. You're going to man up and you're going to, uh, you're going to tell your, um, ride to be the, the the timing's wrong um your life is a lie uh you found out you like pickles a lot i i don't know how i get myself into this but we're not gonna it, the name dr andrew michaels is not gonna come up right at all because if it does then you're you're fucking fired okay that's <laughs> it's, that's it that's it, Goober. Like, if you try to blame this on me like everybody else does in my family, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So, here, you can have it. You can just you can just take it for the next one. I think you should drink the whole six-pack. And uh, get a Uber. Uber? I don't like Ubers because the cars are all compacts, and I just don't fit in the back. But, uh... I think an Uber would be good for you. Uber or uh, what's the other one? And yeah, you should you should go downtown. Uh Google it. Google. Google it. It's Saturday night. You might get uh it might be a drag show going on right now. And there's not nothing wrong with that. You know, RuPaul and all that stuff. I like RuPaul. RuPaul's nice. He's talented, uh to each his own. What are you going to do? I don't watch it. No. Uh, just, I'm not a reality TV guy. I, you know, I tried, but it's just not my bag. You know, how's that? No, I'm married. I can't help you with any of this. I'm old and decrepit and past it. Yeah. How's that sound? I'm not against anything. I do think if you're in a situation where you're going to get married or, you know, make a lifelong commitment, you need to be sure it's the right one. That I do know. And if you don't know, don't do it. I will agree there. But I also think we are not going to blame me or tell her mother that Dr. Andrew Michaels said anything, because I didn't say anything. This didn't happen. Not blaming me for it. It happens. It happens. I've been blamed for a lot of stuff over the years. But that's mostly because I don't believe in... Well, it's not lying. It's lying to yourself. People lie all the time. But when you lie to yourself sooner or later, it's, whatever the truth is, it's going to come out. If you committed a crime or you're not being your true self, it's going to come out. So you might as well just get over your bad self and uh, just be who you are. And you know what? You'll find out people love you just the way you are. I mean that. People don't care if you're a round peg in a square hole or a octagonal square or one or the other. Nobody cares. At the end of the day, you know what people want? They want you to be happy. They want you to be healthy and they want you to be safe. Those three things. 
and any family I've ever met would trade anything just to have their loved ones with them. If they actually would be honest and actually be open about it, any family I've ever met, including my own, would give anything just to have their family members with them for one more day. And that being said, nothing you can say and nothing you can do makes you undesirable as a living, breathing human being. Your family still loves you at the end of the day. They may not know it. They may have some trouble accepting it. But that's the truth. And as far as uh, explaining the birds and the bees to you any further, no. Because mm -mm. I think you already know. Mm -hmm. So, but I'll say this much. If you don't understand something, it's very important to get a partner who loves you and cares about you. And they'll help you. They'll show you all the things that you don't understand and they'll talk to you about it and you can set up a, a safe parameters like you know so you don't do something that offends the other one or hurts them or scares them and you can agree on certain things and work on that and you can really develop a loving relationship with somebody who's willing to love you just the way you are and that's very important in life people might say they love you but somebody who truly loves you loves you just the way you are they accept you and love you unconditionally and that's what family is i have found that over the years that biologically you may not be related to somebody but you can still hold them very dear in your heart and love them and think they're precious and worry about them because you've accepted them into your life so it's very important that you find somebody that cares about you as much as you care about them and if you're in a situation where that's not going on then it's probably not a healthy situation would you agree? Okay. And that's actually the most important part of the birds and the bees, if you're still listening. And that is finding somebody who cares enough about you that they love you for all your silly faults. Farting in bed, leaving the bathroom door open and talking to them while you're watching TV, um, fighting over the remote control, um, arguing over brushing your teeth and how you eat your meals and every little tiny thing that makes you funny and how one person's meticulous about maps and directions and the other person just gets in a car and drives and gets lost constantly you're gonna find out that the person you actually love the most in your life is probably not like you at all and you love them for their faults you love them just the way they are okay Does that help okay all right when we get back to the office on monday morning we're not going to talk about this and i don't care what you do with your wedding plans i don't want to hear about it and i don't want to know about it uh, if the wedding's canceled i expect an rsvp in the mail just like everyone else i don't know if they call that an rsvp what do they call that anyway i don't care I don't want to hear about it anymore. How's that sound? And it won't affect your jo job rating at all. You know why? Because everybody got their own hang-ups, dude. You're no different than anybody else. That's the thing. Everybody, you know, we know about your problems now. I do. Just me. Just me. Um, believe me, I don't want to talk about this at work. I don't. I'm just making that clear. I'm really the guy at work that doesn't want to talk about this at work. But real quick and I gotta go um, you're wearing your problems out on your sleeve and I know about them the difference is most people you meet they hide them and you don't know what their their hookups their hangups their hookups their problems are 
So just because you can see a person's problem doesn't mean the other person doesn't have any, okay? All right, let's make you less of a person because you're scared and you need help right now. All right, good. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I know I did. Thank you for bringing it to me. All right. Sure, let's have another beer and just relax, but uh, until I see you again, please have a most blessed day. All right? Okay. Bye-bye.